All right. Uh, hello, YouTube universe. Uh, I've got a another video I'm making today on the unboxing and installation of uh, a new uh, water pressure machine that I bought. It may be pretty simple and cut dry, uh, cut and dry, and the instructions may be great, but just in case they're not, I'll make a step by step. Um, on taking it out of the box, unboxing, and putting it together. Just so that uh, anyone who's unfamiliar with these things and it's a little bit too complicated can just watch my video and, and do the uh, install based on my step-by-step. -step. So, let me show you what I've got. So, I bought the, here it is. This is the WPX 3400 Westinghouse pressure washer. It's a 3400 PSI, 2.6 uh, GPM gasoline pressure washer. And that's what it looks like. So if you bought this particular uh, pressure washer and you're not sure how to put it together and whatnot, then I'm gonna do it in this video and I'll publish it. And if it helps someone in the future, great. If it doesn't, great. But uh, I thought I'd make a video because Often when I buy things, the installs are not as simple as they say they're going to be, and it should be putting together some screws or whatnot, but it's not always that way. So, And it might be. I don't know. I haven't looked at the instructions yet. But first, I'm going to unbox it, set everything out, and then I'll get it put together. So without any further ado, let me go ahead and get started. All right. First thing we have is the laying on top is the uh, user manual. So it's very thick. So if I read, which sometimes is a challenge for me, I shouldn't have any issues, but um, I will um, try to utilize that better than I did with the, the last install for my Motohorn 2.0, where I kind of skipped reading and some of the things were even though in brevity they were mentioned, they were still mentioned, and had I read the instructions on my Motohorn 2.0 install initially, I would have avoided some of the complications I had throughout that install. So I'm gonna probably take a break at some point, pause the video, and actually read the relevant parts of this before I actually put it together so that I make sure I don't fuck up in this video and spend a lot of time recording a lot of things that's not gonna be helpful to you. So, user manual slash install guide, that's this guy. I'm gonna set that over here. Laying on the side is the pressure gun, the pressure washer gun, and the nozzle for it that connects and gives you the ability to spray. All right, so that's those two guys. We'll set those over here. This is a box, probably all the nuts, bolts, screws, ties, etc. that I'm gonna need. I haven't opened, I won't open it yet, but I'll set it over here. I'm pretty sure that's what's in there. All right. And then the actual, uh, all right, so that's the actual motor. See it there, it's a good looking machine. Gas goes in here. It's a engine switch on and off here. It's got the pull lever for starting it, boom, boom, which hopefully is easy. Some kinks in this cable here. I hope that's not gonna be a problem later. I'm not sure exactly what this is. Let me show you. But um, it looks like the fuel line maybe, um, but it looks like it's got several kinks. There's a kink here, there's a kink here, and there's a kink right up here, and I hope those don't Hope those aren't a problem and I hope they're, yeah, not gonna be an issue later, but that's the way it arrived to me. So we'll make it, put it on the video, show you. So more than likely we have the, we have these holes here. We have this hole and we have this hole and that's going to be where the handle probably hooks into and comes up here. There's my beautiful motorcycle. We'll keep going here. All right. Nice bag. Here 
here is some cabling. I'm not sure if this is for water or what, but I'm sure the directions will say. Looks like it's definitely a connector for some type of hosing. I'm not sure if that's thick enough for water to come through or not, but maybe. We'll see. That's what it looks like there. And that's what it looks like there. So, some, it says, uh, keep away from hot surfaces, blah, 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 3,400 PSI. So maybe this is the water hose. Maybe that's what that is. Westinghouse front part of the pressure washer that probably connects just like this. But I'm not going to connect it yet until I read the instructions. I'll set that here for now. And that's it. The box is now empty. come over here let's get this box since we looked at everything else that was all that was in the box let me open up this small box here just to open up to what's in here so what we have in the box is this is the four cycle small engine lubricant that comes with it and that is um, 10w30 and it is 20.3 fluid ounces. So that came with it. Also, these are the different nozzles that go with the pressure washer. Each of these nozzles gives you a wider or shorter, a wider or thinner uh, pressure water that's coming out. The wider is for less pressure, the thinner is for more pressure. So, that's what these guys are. There's five of them, five nozzles. Then we have uh, some type of, says foot and M8 lock nut. Not exactly sure what that is, but it's probably some secure, to secure something down. So that's that. Then we have, it says lower gun holder and M6 screw and lock nut and two washers. That's that. And those. Okay. Then we have the last thing in the box is upper gun holder and plastic rivets. That's there. With inside of that bag are the rivets. So Again, I said, the instructions are probably going to tell me exactly what I need to do. So, all right. So, let's turn it this way. Like that. And then let me take out the user manual and I'm gonna pause this video while I read some and I will be back once I figure out what I need to do all right I am back um, the guide is awesome it actually gives you step by step so if you follow the guide you shouldn't have any issues but again some people are visual learners like me so this video will hopefully supplement the guide and to see how it's actually done so I plan to just make short videos and splice them together at the end. Step one, step two, step three, etc. Okay? So the first step in the assembly is to install the upper gun holder. You do that onto the front of the unit, which is this. This is the front of the unit. And if you're facing it, like I am now, there it is, it's going to be this side over here, which is 
if you're if you're looking at it, it's going to be the right side. Okay, so you're going to take this Allen wrench, this Allen bolt out, this Allen nut bolt out, and you're going to attach the upper gun holder here. So it's going to sit on the side, and when you when it's turned facing this way, it will be on your left hand side. When you're actually behind it, it will be on your left hand side. If you're facing it, you'll install it here, it'll be on your right side. So the first thing I need to do is take off this um, top right bolt, the washer and nut, and I'm gonna reinstall it with the upper spray gun holder attached to it. And then from the rear of the unit, install the push rivet which is included in this pack into this upper gun holder. So that's step number one. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So I need a Allen wrench. I'm not sure of the size. It doesn't, let me see if it does tell me. No. Let me see if at the beginning it tells me anywhere. Yeah, I don't see the sizes of things that are needed in the install guide for the Allen wrenches and things like that. So. We'll just figure that out and I will um, put that information here when I have it. Uh, I got the wrong set. Put this away and actually get my Allen wrench set. All right. There we go. All right, so looks like it's maybe this size. Let's see. Yeah, that's the perfect size. Wow, I'm good at this. So this is Allen wrench number. Here he did H4. I'm not sure. So it's three. Wait, it's a uh, four. What is this? Twenty-seven. So the things are mixed up on my. But this is uh, this is. H, H4, okay, so you can figure it out. Just grab it and uh, you'll take off this. Just hold the back of it. Otherwise you'll spin it forever and it won't unscrew. Pull that out, long screw. You have the washer and the the washer and the nut and the screw have come out. And it looks like I forgot a part. I should have started with installing the handle, so that's my bad. I'm gonna start that, I'm gonna do that first actually before this. So this, the handle part, this, should get attached onto the pressure washer machine before I do step number two. That was installing the upper gun holder was the next step. The first step should be installing the handle. So I've already fucked up the video, sorry. So let me do that part now. Looks like it just snapped down, so that's not that big of a deal. Um, it says install the handle on the lower frame with the decal side facing the engine. Slide the handle downward until the spring buttons click into place through the holes in the handle. So that's exactly what I thought was going to happen. And so I'll just do that now. Put that over here. Turn it this way. There we go. So I'm going to this to this guy. Go down in here. Push the buttons in. There we go. Easy enough. Then we turn it this way. Okay, so that's actually going to be how we're going to install the upper gun part is here. Let me move this. I move this over here. Like so that's good. Move my phone here. So I like to get my I keep my motorcycle in it because I love my motorcycle. There we go. Has nothing to do with the install, but it's just a beautiful backdrop, I think. So, 
we did that, so now we're gonna get the done part installed for the upper upper part on the, so it says install, let's see. So down here at the bottom, there's a mounting foot. So that's the next step is this guy. See that? We talked about that foot and M8 lock nut. So we have to take that out and let's put that on the front, which goes down here at the front facing it, where it says soap. It goes under there, goes up. So we're gonna tip it, put this glue here. And that's kind of a rubber stopper, which helps. And it's, uh, it's rubberized, so it's not gonna slide around. So that's nice and it'll just sit there. So this nut is pretty common, uh, pretty basic. Put this nut on top and tighten it, and that step will be done. See if I can get the screw, the nut on there. There we go. So let me get my wrenches. All right, so I need to tighten that nut down here. And it's got, it's got the, uh, the bolt actually has the automatic clamp thing inside it where once you screw it down far enough, it kind of clamps down really hard and doesn't let it come back up. So, wrong side. Still too big or small. Hmm. Hmm, still too small. All right, that's the right one. There we go. So that's number number thirteen. Number thirteen. Number 13 wrench. I'm just gonna tighten that down. Make sure the wheel's not turning. The foot. Probably don't want to over tighten, so just made it nice and secure, and I'm just gonna leave it at that. So, all right, moving on to the next step, which is what I started with, which I can do now, which is installing the upper gun holder. So, from the front of the unit, it says remove the nuts or the uh the screw washer and bolt from the top right as you're facing it and I did that okay that's here and then I want to take the upper gun holder which I showed you earlier was in the box let me go ahead and take those out so here's the upper gun holder set that down along with the it looks like uh, two small screws two small black screws we'll set those beside it let me read it so uh, from the front of the unit, remove top right bolt, washers, and nut. Reinstall with the upper spray gun holder from the rear of the unit. Install the push rivet as shown. All right, so push rivet as shown. Okay. So let me, looks like it just kind of pushes out. And I should just, from the front, it should face like this. And then this kind of will slide. I would think this way. Nope. One sec, I'll be back. All right, so I'm back. So yeah, as usual, I'm an idiot and I'm trying to do things the wrong way. So this does get put here, right? But it doesn't go, and you probably can figure this out. You probably didn't need to me to tell, tell you this, but again, I'm 
I'm reading it from the perspective of someone who doesn't, I mean, I'm not very mechanically inclined, so I have to try things out and embarrass myself, and I'm okay with you seeing that if it helps you. So this does go like this, right? But I was trying when I, uh, earlier I was trying to get it pushed between the blue casing between the blue casing and the bar here. It doesn't do that. It goes on the back side. You just put it on the back side of the bar. Here, so let me show you. You see, it just gets put on, it just goes right against it like that. And these two will squeeze together and then you'll run the screws through it. And then that will be perfect. So that's the way you do it. And I'm gonna go ahead and tighten those up now per the instructions and we'll move on to the next step. So, it's here. All right, so. Where did I put my screws? There it is. Let me get this, let me get this, let me get this. Okay, there, those two small things. So I feed the screw back through the hole here. And I go through this hole as well. Okay. Second. Here's a tool that's like the duct tape. It's fixed for everything. Trying to find the hole in the back to feed the screw back through again. So it's usually the simplest things that are the hardest to do. Just finding a hole. Yay, I found the hole. All right, so that is fed through. And then this will go back here and get fed through here as well. Like so. Okay. So that's now connected. So let's keep reading. So the washer and the nut will go back on there again. Okay. Put that back here. So all I'm doing now is securing the washer and the bolt onto the back of the screw that I just pushed through. And if you have big hands, I don't know, I guess my hands are not maybe massive, but they're big enough that these screws are Hard to hold on to, so I do need my wrench set now. Let's see what size that is. Let me grab this guy. Let's see if this is right. No, nope, too small. Let's try this guy. And he went, that's perfect. So if you're using a ratchet set to tighten that screw back there, it is a number 10, number 10. So you don't have to find it yourself. You're welcome. Put this back on here. So it's really tiny. It's a small space. So getting it threaded correctly, there's a very tiny area to move in here. If you have bulky fingers, it's kind of difficult to do. Plus the inside of these bolts have the, the thing I was talking about with, yeah, it just fucking fell off here. That's not gonna work. Yeah, just getting it threaded correctly is a challenge, but it looks like it's on there now, so I should be able to just tighten it down. Let me put some pressure on this side so it doesn't turn. So I'm using my Allen wrench, and then I'm just gonna tighten it, tighten it down. Let me get my uh, Allen wrench uh, driver here. 
There we go. Or my uh, socket. There we go. So I'm sure most everyone is already aware of this, but if you keep pressure on one side, you can tighten the other side much easier. So I keep pressure here with my Allen wrench on the front while I have my socket wrench tightening the screw in the back. If you don't do that, it won't work out very well. It'll turn it forever. So that's plenty tight enough. This is nicely secured. This is the hose nozzle bracket area for the top of the gun. And I still have a piece to install, which is the, the small push rivets, they call it. Push rivets. So one side. So one side pops into the other side. And it snaps once you have it pushed in. And that is supposed to go over here somewhere, let's see where they have it. They have it, it says, from the rear of the unit, install the push rivet as shown. This, on the back side, the push rivet should go inside of there. See how that snapped in the bottom? So it's sticking out the other side, and then I would push the screw through, or this plastic cap here through, God damn it, through the front, and it would snap into that. And again, I don't know how it provides additional security because it's not really securing to this. There's no hole back here, or maybe there is. Hmm. Hmm. Well, let me look at it again. So, is there a way to do that? Take this out. here and let's see down here if it's possible to yeah I don't see how it would so I'm looking at back here right and I see two holes but I don't see how I could get the back side of this push rivet piece the thick side inside of here right that's the only way I could see that it would provide some additional security and stabilization is if it actually fit inside of there but there's no way to get that inside of there so I don't know uh, how that would be possible. And this part, where's the other part? This part, also, there's no hole on this side to get that in there anywhere. So I'm not sure how that would, I just don't know how this is providing any additional layer of security. That's all. So, or any additional um, support. But, So, we'll just uh, push this long screw back in, find the hole again, hopefully. Yay, I found the hole easily there. And then we're going to put this here, push it through the back side, like that. So now that's on the bottom, and the top is here. So we'll push that through here. Get the washer and the nut back there. Get that threaded, hopefully. Spinning the uh, bolt in the reverse direction helps with getting it aligned properly on the threads. So I have that. Let me get this here. Okay, let me get this on the other side. Hold this down. And then I'm going to retighten it. And again, my apologies that 
I messed up on some of the parts, but I just don't know things until I know them. And then that happens to be captured on a video. So sorry about that. If it helps, great. If it doesn't, great. All right, so now we have the top screw tightened down and we need to snap the other screw into that uh, here. And this is again called the push rivet. So I'm just gonna there and just kind of push it into the back side. There we go. There we go. So that's in there. There we go. And that's what it looks like when it's done. All right. So that step is done. It's nice and secure. All right. Nice and secure. So moving on to the next step. All right. Ha. All right. All right. Insert spray nozzles. Insert the colored nozzles into the corresponding holders on the top of the pressure washer. So again, these are the spray nozzles. And there's an area on top here. These holes are where the spray nozzles go. These five holes. One, two, three, four, five. So it says into the corresponding. I don't know what that means, but maybe they only fit into one particular hole. They're all different sizes maybe, I don't know. Maybe it doesn't matter. But let me just go up here and see if I can just pop them down. But yeah, they kind of just plop down, but let me do one to five if I can. Let me see. Um, see if they're numbered at all. Uh, oh yeah, I see it there. So, ah. Uh, so, very small lettering or very small font on the top. There's a little, a little, a little indentation on the top of these things. And inside of that shows the angle so it's like this, and the different angle is how far it opens. So the closer together is the smaller, and the further apart together is the wider. So I'm just gonna try to put them on here in accordance with the angle that they are. So let me set them down first. So the white is 40 degrees. The orange is 15 degrees. The green is 25 degrees. The red is zero degrees. So that is gonna be the most powerful stream of water that has nearly no angle to it. It's good for cracks in uh, flooring on cement and uh, back decking. It's great for that, okay? And then the black is the soap. So this is where you push, I guess you connect that to just spray soap out of it, I guess. So again, uh, red is zero. Orange is 10 degrees. I'm sorry, orange is 15 degrees. I can't see, I'm so old. Uh, green is 25 degrees. White is 40 degrees. And then the black is for the soap. So I'm just gonna stick them over here from on this side, just kind of stick them down in order. Yep, they fit nicely down into the rubber housings up top. They just kind of snap down into it. Easy to pull up, easy to pull down. And I put them in order according to the angle, but I'm sure that doesn't matter. If you know what each one is, you don't need to know the colors and you can just put them however you want. But this is gonna help me. Actually, I'll put the soap by itself. That makes more sense. I'll put the soap one by itself over here and then I'll put the others um, right to left, smallest to biggest. So we said, oh my God, I can't read. 40 degrees, 25 degrees, 15 degrees, 
zero degree. So red is going to be the first one on the left facing it. That's zero degrees. Orange is going to be beside it, which is 15 degrees. Green is going to be next at 25 degrees. And last is white at 40 degrees. So, facing the machine to have them in the right order, you would have soap over here by itself. Soap is by itself. It's in a special little area over here. And then facing it from left to right, it would be red, orange, green, white. Red, orange, green, white. That's the smallest angle to the largest angle. So the most powerful to the least powerful, but the least powerful also spreads out farther so you can cover more area. Okay, that's that. So that part's done. So let's see, what's next? All right. Assemble spray gun and hose. So first, install the spray lance on the spray gun and tighten the spray gun collar hand tight. Do not over tighten. So that's these guys here. Showed that earlier, but here's the plastic gun and here's the nozzle. We're gonna take these out of the plastic. Okay, so it looks like out of the plastic. Okay, and the nozzle. Or this is the lance, they call it. And this part that had the plastic cap on it goes onto the gun. And you seat it onto the gun and you turn it. Turn it and tighten it. Keep tightening it. There we go. So that's nice and tight. And it says, uh, do not over tighten. Uh, tighten the spray gun collar hand tight. So that's what I'm doing. That's good. So now the nozzle is there connected. Okay, and I will be right back. All right, I am back. So we are ready to continue. So the next part was to uh, engage the trigger lock in safe mode. So here's the trigger lock. So you wanna push that back and now you're in safe mode. You cannot push that nozzle, all right? And it says, install the high pressure hose and tighten the collar, do not over tighten. So this is the high pressure hose. Okay, I'm gonna undo this. Here. have these rubber clipping or secure things around them. I just cut those off and I want to get one side onto here. And this cap came off pretty well on the bottom side of the gun. And that's where we want to secure this hose. So you push it down on it and you push the black um, cap as you push it up, this will push up onto the screw that's connected to the gun, and then you just tighten that screw, okay? And again, it says, do not over tighten. So hand tight, that's what I'm doing. So now that's connected, okay? So we'll set that down. We already put the trigger guard on. Uh, the trigger lock prevents the spray gun from being triggered accidentally. Push the lock fully to engage it. So when I pushed it in, I heard a click and there's a notch that it fits into. Just make sure that is seated as indicated and you actually hear that snapping to where that snapped into that notch that's in the back of this, the, uh, the safety. So, select desired nozzle for application. Put back the quick connector collar. So on the other side, so on this 
on the front of the gun. I think I'll start with the biggest angle, which is going to be the 40 degree, I believe it was. God, I can't read. And my memory is so bad. Yes, the white one, the 40 degree. So you push back on this and you push this here and then push that back up through it and it's snapped now, it's in there. And that's it right there. And you can also change it, change the direction of how you want it. But I want it to be kind of straight up and down, I think, with the gun. So I'm gonna kind of turn it till it's there. So that's good. See what else it says now. Uh, mount the spray gun in the gun holders. Well, it looks like I skipped skipped another step. I was like, how is it gonna secure on the bottom? Well, when, after I snapped the bars in at the very beginning, the next step, if I would have read, is to secure the mounting foot and lower gun holder on the same side. So it goes, you see that side? It's right over here. It's going to go down here. It's going to go, move my phone around a little bit. So the same side as the top one, it's gotta go on the bottom here. So let me, Loosen this up, slide that down. There we go, so it's gonna go here. That's the lower foot piece. So let me get it. This is the guy here. So that's what that looks like. And then it comes with a long screw, a washer and a bolt. Let me take that out, okay. I'm gonna move the gun and hose Just to get down here. So let's see what it says. None of these steps really matter the order, honestly. So it doesn't really matter that I'm doing them out of order in this instance. A lot of times it does matter, but it shouldn't matter in this instance because all of these things are kind of separate things that you need to do, but one doesn't impact the other. So I think we're still okay. So. Installing the mounting foot and lower gun. Install the mounting foot and secure with the M8 nut, which is this here. Attach the lower gun holder with the M6 screws, washer, and nut. With the M8 nut. M8 nut. Well, the M8 nut is here. Oh, we did the mounting foot, so that was good. So the mounting foot was this piece here. So yeah, that's already done. So now we need to do the lower gun holder and the lower gun holder requires the M6 nut and the lower holder and the M6 screw. So putting this here, it should go on the back side just like that. Like this, there we go. Just like that. And then the screw will get fed through. So let me pull the screw out. Looks like the screw feeds from front to back. So we'll put this on, we'll push the screw through, send it all the way to the back. Try to find the hole. There we go, found the hole. So we will put, looks like it came with two washers. Maybe one should go on the front and back. Yeah, one should go on the front and the back. So two washers. One will go on the front here and then gets fed through here, right? And we put that through, find the hole. Come on, there we go, so it found the hole. Now I'm gonna put the other washer and nut on the back side and tighten it down. And I'll probably have to do the same thing with using two tools. All right, so. And I know, um, again, I know probably a lot of you are laughing at me who are mecha mechanically inclined, but that's okay, I'm fine with that. As long as this hopefully helps one or two people, that's all I care about. So I have this tightened down. So I'm just gonna tighten this baby. Again, I know a lot of things 
people would know if they're mechanics or whatever, but people who don't mess with installations of any any sort in their normal lives, they wouldn't know these things. So my goal is to just show the layman for dummies versions of, of anything that I buy that I have to put together to hopefully help someone in the future. There we go, so that's nice and tight. So now the top portion is tightened and the bottom portion is tightened. So now we're able to put our gun into the holder. All right. So, let's see. So now we turn it back to where we were. And we say, all right, we just put the gun nozzle onto the front of the gun. Connect the high pressure hose to the high pressure outlet on the pump which is where is it there it is so it's on that side so if you're looking at it see the unit so I can get the right angle here and then if you go around the back Okay. The area where the hose connects to on the other side is here. So it feeds into here. And there's a plastic cap on it. Make sure that plastic cap comes off. Otherwise, you won't have pressure at all. So it connects here. So I'm going to set that up here. Fix my angle here. That's good. And then we will connect the other side here, like this. And the same principle, you push it in, and then you use the black cap screw piece to tighten it down. So, hand tight, that's good. Let's, let's see what that, I'm not sure what that is, but it's, keep it there. All right, so that's it for that. So that's now connected. Be careful to avoid cross threading, which can cause the hose to leak during use. Okay, check, did that. All right. It looks like we are fully assembled, so I should be able to take this guy, set him here. So yeah, it rests nicely here and then goes down to the bottom down there. So. It, Sets on the bottom foot, okay. And I'm not really sure what it, what's to do with all this extra hose that's kind of just hanging here, but, oh, I see it now. It fits here, duh. So we're gonna wrap it around here, all right? I'm gonna do that now. Let me fix this. There we go. So all of this extra hose comes up here. Just take what I need to loosen up there. So we'll take, get rid of that, get rid of that. All of this extra comes up here and just kind of lays right there. So that's kind of what it looks like uh, now. I'm gonna do one more here. So, there we go, so that's Fully put there, that's good. Everything looks good. The only thing I worry about is this here, as I talked about in the beginning, the white, I'm not sure if this is fuel hose or, or what, what this is, this white clear hosing that came, but it's crinked. Crinked, I think is a real word. It's like, it's bent like a garden hose would be bent and you wouldn't get new pressure. It's bent in one, two, three places. So I hope that's not going to impact anything uh, with the use of this. And this snap came loose, so we we'll push that back through. So let's just keep going. So now we're at the part where it says initial oil fill. Uh, the unit has been shipped without oil. Do not turn it on. Do not turn it on and attempt to use it if you put gasoline in it and you have not put oil in it or you will fry the engine. I do know that much. So, yeah, it says, do not attempt to crank the engine, etc., before putting the oil in, which they sent you. 
Failure to add engine oil before starting will result in serious engine damage. Notice, use the two-stroke cycle oil or other approved. Use of two-stroke cycle oil or other unapproved oil types can cause severe image damage that is not covered under warranty. So the included recommended oil type, which is 10W30 engine oil, has been provided, and I'll get that in a second. If running the pressure washer in extreme temperatures, refer to the following chart. We are not. It's uh, Virginia here, so it's not bad weather. So on a level surface, remove the oil dipstick. So let me take this over to the other side where I saw the dipstick. So that is, readjust my phone. That is here, it's oil dipstick. And it even says, caution, oil has been drained for shipping. I'm gonna take that off because I don't care about that anymore. I already know that. I'm gonna get rid of that tag. And I'm going to remove the oil dipstick. So that is removed. Oil dipstick is removed. There is, and it says, note, there is an oil dipstick filler neck on both sides of the unit. Either can be used to check or add oil. So, there is an oil dipstick filler neck on both sides of the unit. Either can be used to check or add oil. So there's one of them. Let's see the other side. Yeah, there's one on the other side. Let me show you. So there's the hole for one of them. And if you go over to the other side, the other one is right here. Yeah. So we're gonna go back over to this side because we wanna put the oil in, make sure we're not breaking the rules. So we want to, we'll need to get a funnel, I'm sure. Let's just, just keep reading. Using the supplied oil and funnel tip. Okay, looks like it's already got a funnel tip, so we're good. So the package came with oil, and it also came with a funnel tip. So that's good. So we'll open the oil, poke a hole in it. Let me get my knife. And let me attach the filter, the um, funnel cap to the actual bottle itself. So now it's nice and secure. And then I am going to, uh, let's see, make sure, using supplied oil funnel, blah, 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 add oil into the oil filter neck. Note, as residual oil from factory may remain in the engine, add the oil incrementally to prevent overfilling the engine. See engine oil level check in the maintenance section. Replace the oil dipstick and hand tighten. So, let me get some rags. So I got two rags here. I'm gonna rip them up. I'm gonna rip them. I'm gonna put one under the unit on the bottom, just on the floor, just in, just in case something leaks. And I'm gonna put it on top of the wheel. There we go. So I've got it, you know, right up under the area where the oil may leak and I'm in my garage, so I don't want it leaking on my floor. So put one there and I also have an extra one in case I need to clean up any mess here. So it's already open, I've got the cap on, so I'm gonna go ahead and feed it into and I'm gonna take the gun back off of here because it's kind of in the way now. I'm just gonna kind of sit that down. There we go. So we'll just put this inside of there and just let it, let it rip. Let me try now. And this feels like the bottle that was provided looks like it's, feels like it's pretty empty, so Maybe adding the whole thing is the answer. Again, I just didn't want to over add. So let me test it. Okay, oh yeah, that's definitely full. Let me clean it off and check it one more time. Clean off this. Let me stick it back down in there.
Take it out carefully. Yes, this is, you can see the glare, it's on the entire thing. So that's definitely full. I did not use the whole, I did not use the whole, what is it, 20 point, yeah, 20.3 fluid ounces. Of, I still have a little bit on the bottom and I could have even used a little bit less. So it's probably right here right now, right about here. I could have probably gone only to like that far in the bottle and it would have been full. So just for you FYI, you don't need the whole thing on day one. So I'm gonna put this screw back in here with this nut tightener, whatever the fuck this thing's called. And that will be done and that will ensure I don't fry my engine. All right, so, and I'm gonna keep this cap because that's pretty handy to have in the future. So I've, I don't have one of those, so now I do. So I'm gonna put that in a safe location so that I have it for the future. And I'll put my cap back on my on my oil, my four cycle small engine lubricant. And I'll put them over here with my other oil. Along with the small cap for the future. So that part's done. So now I'm gonna put the gun back on the case here. And I think we're done. Um, let's go back to here. Let's go read the assembly. Um, fuel requirements, clean, fresh, unleaded gasoline, 87 to 93 octane is required. Up to 10% ethanol gas, gas a haul is acceptable. Um, do not use E85 or E15. Do not use a gas oil mixture. Do not modify the engine to run on alternate fuels. Do not fuel indoors. Do not create a spark or flame while fueling. So basically, all we need is regular gasoline between 87 and 93 octanes. And that's what I use for my riding lawnmower as well. So I can use the existing gas that I have. Even though that gas container is empty, I need to go fill it up. But once I do that, it says adding fuel stabilizer extends the usable life of fuel and helps prevent deposits. Uh, always mix the amount, and I do have fuel stabilizer that I use already anyway for my gasoline. This is what I use. So it recommends fuel stabilizer, and this is what I use. Okay. And so I will, I have a two and a half gallon container I use, and I fill it up, and I put, I think it's about an ounce of this. Let me look, make sure. Uh, one ounce. Yep. One ounce treats two and a half gallons. My container, my fuel container is two and a half gallons. So I put one ounce of this in there, mix it around a little bit, and that'll be good for both my pressure washer and my riding lawnmower. So I'm going to go get some gas, fill it up, and we'll go to our next step later. I think the only thing left now, once we get it filled up, is to start it up and see how it goes. So I'll be back. All right. Welcome back. I went to uh, the gas station, got some gas, put my fuel stabilizer in. Um, so I'm ready. A couple of things I forgot to mention at the beginning. Inside of the user manual install guide, you received some two different two things I wanted to point out. One was a congratulatory card that says um, this item qualifies for a bonus pack of spray nozzles, which are nice to have. You never know if one's defective, one stops working, etc. Have some extras around, guys. More parts, so or girls, whoever's doing it. Um, so you just have to go to the website and get your uh, thing. It says leave a rating and review on Amazon, which is where I bought it. And with the subject line bonus gift and include your Amazon username and you'll get some nozzles shipped to you. So that's number one. Number two, you received a, a thing that folds out. It's an open, open and closed thing. And it shows you the different uh, selection for your nozzles and what their intent and purposes are. It also has the specs listed here, which is nice. It also has a maintenance schedule on that. So keeping this and updating it will make sure you have a long life to your product. So that, that thing that I wanted to mention. So I'm pretty much done. The only thing I need to do is fill my tank, go out and start using it. Um, it was not a hard install, but usually, you know, I'm backward half the time, so it takes me a little bit of extra time. So, but I always, you know, most of the time I end up figuring stuff out. It just sometimes takes me longer. So, there might be some of you out there that are like me. If not, then move the fuck on. And if you are like me, then 
glad it helped. All right, so um, fill in the fuel tank. All right, so it says do not overfill. Fill only to the top of the fuel screen filter visible on the filler neck. So we will come over here and look. So yeah, we will see, I'll show you down here. So I unloosen the, the top and you see down in there is the fuel filler neck and you fill until you see it down there. So just common sense on that. That common sense is not so common. So I'm gonna do that too. And I will just fill it. All right, looks like I have enough in there. That'll do it. Put the gas back. All right, so I am ready to go start spraying off to the front part on my front porch area that has, looks like some mold, mildew-ish, green looking stuff on the ground. I'm trying to, on the floorboard, I wanna spray off, see how that works. But uh, guys, that's, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm not gonna show you that part because I'm assuming it's 3,400 PSI. I'm assuming it's gonna work. Um, I might need to put on some of the smaller nozzles to get more pressure, but I'm gonna start with the big one, 40 degree. We'll go from there. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, this is the Westinghouse 3,400 PSI. Um, and I forgot to show you something here. If you actually look, I didn't have to think through it. If you look, it shows where the colors go. Now I, I was just looking at it and noticed that. So yeah, kind of shows you on the front where to put the colors. I got it right, but I went the long way, which I usually do. And it even shows you little images of the spray that comes out. This is a street spray, 15 degree spray, 25 degree spray, and 40 degree spray. And this over here, which is where I put it, and again, went the long way, but that's the soap. So, perfect. And the soap goes down here. Um, you pop this off and you put the soap down here. I'm not sure if it's a soap water mixture, but I'm gonna have to read in that to find out. You can read that manual part yourself to find that out. I just wanted to do the install with you guys uh, so you see how to put it together. So, good luck with it. Um, let me know if you have any questions, concerns. If you like the video and you want to subscribe, great. If you don't, I don't care. But if you want to press, super. Um, I don't do this for money through YouTube or anything like that. I just do these videos to try to be helpful to somebody in the future. So hopefully it's helpful to you. If not, then keep on moving. Later.